Hello and welcome to the Backyard Bumblebee Count. My name is Elaine Evans. I am an extension educator at the University of Minnesota and I'm going to be talking today about how you can participate as part of the Minnesota Bumblebee Survey, which is a program of the University of Minnesota Extension as well as the Backyard Bumblebee Count, which is a program from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Why bumblebees? One out of three bumblebee species are in decline. The once common rusty patch bumblebee is now facing extinction. This is a bee that was once common in Minnesota. We do still have them here, but they are federally protected and we are trying to do what we can to prevent extinction. There are a few different things that you can do to help planting flowers, keeping them free of pesticides as well as um, other habitat that would be used for nesting free of pesticides, taking action to stop climate change, and also collecting data. So today we're focusing on the collecting data part of helping. Rare pollinators, as you can imagine from their name, are hard to find. So having more people looking increases the chances that we can find rusty patch bumblebees. A nice thing with this program is that we also are documenting the time that you spend looking and that helps inform us not just about where these bees are, but um, how, how many of them are there. Some background with the Minnesota Bumblebee Survey. This is something that, um, that I started organizing back in 2008 and we do counts of bumblebees and record the flowers that they're found on across Twin City Parks. We have different experts that are available at each of these survey dates as well as volunteers that, that come to help collect the bees. In 2020, we have needed to find an alternative to these in-person surveys and so we are tagging on to a project that started up last year in 2019 called the Backyard Bumblebee Count, which is also doing counts of bumblebees and floral records. This is a project that um, people can participate in anywhere across North America. It's especially encouraged for people who are in the former range of the Rusty Patch Bumblebee, which is all across Eastern North America, to participate. There is the option to just simply take photos and share them, but um, we do encourage people to do take the extra step and um, go over the, some of the protocols I'm sharing today to help us um, track abundances. So here we are in 2020, bringing these two projects together. There are a few different things that you need to, to do for participating in the Bumblebee Count. So I'm gonna be going over these before you start. It's important to get some Bumblebee ID skills. The most important one is knowing whether or not what you have is a bumblebee or not. There are a lot of other creatures that look like bumblebees. And um, so, so telling those apart is something that, um, that will, will help because we are just focusing on bumblebees for this project. There's also uh, the option to familiar with some of the common and distinctive species of bumblebees that we have. This would enable you to, to not have to take photos of every single bee that you see, but you do need to develop and practice those skills. We also are asking you to tell male and female bees apart from each other. And we do have these identification resources that are available to you. And um, they are at the link there, which will also be linked in the, the description for the video. I do want to let you know also that we are using iNaturalist as the place where photos will be posted. And there are, um, within iNaturalist, you can get some, some help with ID too. But um, it's important to, um, to get, get some basic skills if you can. Also important because we are relying on photos is to get some skills for taking photos of bumblebees. So here are a few tips 
it's best to get close up to the bee. They actually, when they're busy foraging on a flower, you can get up pretty close. Use the macro setting on your camera. Also show multiple angles. It's great to get a shot of the face as well as the side and the back of the bee. One way, one trick for getting those kind of multiple angles is to take a video and then isolate stills from that video. The website I'm sharing here at bumblebeewatch.org, which is another great project to participate in for tracking bumblebees, has some photo tips. And I wanna let you know that the photos don't need to be, be beautiful works of art. They mostly need to show the characters for ID. So this is another reason why you need to study up on Bumblebee ID so you can make sure that your photos are showing us what we need to see to be able to identify those bumblebees. This is a couple of terrible photos that I took a few days ago, but I can see enough of this bee with that um, angle, especially that angle from the top. I can see that this is a brown belted bumblebee, Bombus griseocolis. The next step after you've gotten these basic skills is to make sure that you have joined on um, inaturalist.org. You can create an account there for free. They also have an app you can download and use. And then once you're there, join the Project Backyard Bumblebee Count. Once you've done these things, you're ready to start collecting data. So I am going to show you a video of how to do one of these data collections. The backyard bumblebee count is focused on a particular time period when there's lots of bumblebees out, which is from July 24th to August 2nd of 2020 this year. But um, we are going to do it a little differently. We're gonna have you do the same protocols but do them more frequently and for a, a wider time span. So starting in the end of June through the middle of August, you can um, do these surveys in your backyard or in a favorite park, any place where there's flowers and you might find bumblebees. I'm gonna show you how to do one of these surveys by doing one in my backyard. To start, we're going to just walk around the yard a little bit to see what is blooming. And what I have with me is I have a camera to take pictures of bees, and I have a data sheet that I'll be using to record data about what I find. Once I record the data, I will be sharing it on the Backyard Bumblebee Count project, which is on iNaturalist, and I'll be going over how we do that. So um, now I'm going to walk around a little bit and just see what's blooming, see where the bees are so I can know uh, where it will be worth looking when we're, we're doing, doing our survey. So um, here in my, um, in my backyard, I've got some, some white clover blooming. That's something that bumblebees might like. I see some other bees. Um, uh, Anna's hyssop. If you're doing this at a park where it's a bigger area, you might just want to look ahead of time and kind of see which area, how much space you might want to cover and go around to see what plants are there. If you don't know all of the plants, iNaturalist is a great resource for that. You can take pictures of the flowers you don't know and share them on iNaturalist and have the community there help you identify them. Um, it can be a little bit tricky if they are horticultural varieties, but um, especially with native plants, it's a, it's a great resource. So you do want to kind of scope it out and um, know your plants because we're trying to record what plants we see the bumblebees on. And then, um, so we've got a good idea of what's going on here. 
Um, on the, the data sheet, I'm just going to note the start time so that we know when we're starting here. So I'm starting at 1.25 and today is June 24th. I'm doing this at my home, which I'll just look up the latitude and longitude later. Um, we also have information about the habitat type. So this is in a developed area in my yard in the middle of St. Paul. So um, what I will do then is just go ahead and start now. So I noted the time and I'm just going to start looking for bees on flowers. And um, you can, can just make sure that you're really looking carefully and you can, can walk kind of slowly, keeping your eyes and ears out, looking for, for flowers where you're, you might see some bumblebees. And even these, these places, these times when you don't find them, it's, it's good for us to have that information because it helps us understand um, the abundances of bumblebees and how they're doing instead of just, we saw this bumblebee here at this time. So that's why we're having this protocol instead of just, um, just taking photos. So here's, here's some other stuff blooming. I forgot there's some of the um, New Jersey tea. Hi, I just wanted to redo a little section because in our full survey that we did, it was starting to rain at the end and um, we weren't seeing a ton of bees. So I just want you to see an example of what you do when you have multiple bees in a, in a patch where you're looking. So, um, so now the, the sun has come back out and, um, and I'm seeing multiple bees here. So um, I was looking at that one that just flew off and that was an impatience and so is this one. I tried to get a picture of at least one um, representative from every species so that we can get an idea of what's going on. Um, and just in between bees again, I'm just kind of taking a picture of my hand to um, make a dividing point. So um, for this one, I'm gonna say I have a photo in patience, but this time I saw two of them. So I'll do two hatch marks for now. Um, I saw pollen on both of them and they're on the, the spirea. Um, let's see, so I am seeing another bee in here. It's another impatience. I'm not that sure that it's not the one that was here that just flew back. So I'm not counting her. It is a little bit tricky to keep your eye on all of the bees and everything that's happening. So you just kind of have to, to take your best guess as to, to whether it's um, you're seeing new bees or not. And I'm just going to take a second here to see if there is anyone else on this patch now. And that's, that's it. So we'll um, connect this in and um, hopefully this will give you an idea of, of um, what things are like at a busier patch as well. To summarize what we did there is I printed data sheets, I got my camera, I went out and scouted flowers in my backyard, I recorded my start time and the other, other metrics that are on the data sheet, and then I started to, to photo bees and record information on the data sheet. The data sheet is available for, for download at the Wix Backyard Bumblebee Count site, which will be um, linked also in the, in the description. 
to go over what that we did when we were recording data. You can start out by recording the, the date, recording the type of landscape that you're in, and then that start time. And then you, once you're, you're starting, you will record the species of bumblebees that you're seeing and the, the number as well as the sex and the flower. A reminder here that we are asking for photos of each combination of species, sex, and flower. So now that we've collected data, I'm going to share another video about how you share this data on iNaturalist. There are options to just use the iNaturalist app when you're out in the field for, for this particular survey, especially when we're in cooperation with the Minnesota Bumblebee Survey, I encourage you to use the, the data sheets just to get um, everything recorded and then you can, can share through the iNaturalist website afterwards as I'm demonstrating here. Hi, I am going to quickly show you how to enter data on the iNaturalist site for the backyard bumblebee count. So I have iNaturalist open to the backyard bumblebee count page. I'm going to click on add observation. And for the, the survey that we did, we just saw one bee. It was a brown belted bumblebee. And this was from um, June 24th. I'm going to hold off on um, entering where it is, but it was um, in St. Paul. And I am going to then um, get to the file. So I have some a place on my desktop where I've just stored my 2020 backyard bumblebee count photos. And I named them with uh, the observation and the date so I can find them easily and add them to the right observation. And you may be used to using iNaturalist, but maybe not with um, a project or not with the Backyard Bumblebee Count project. So you'll next need to scroll down to fill out the project observation fields. So again, you put in, put in the date. Here you can put in the count, so you don't need to have photos of every single individual as long as you have a photo of each bee, um, bee species that you are identifying and um, on the different plants where you are as well because we want to record that, that plant information with them. So we saw our brown belted bumblebee on Spirea japonica. The total surveying time we had for this observation was eight minutes. It was a female and the land cover was developed. And then we just save the observation and we are done. If we had some, some additional species, we would be saving those and, um, and adding them, adding all that information for, for each of those observations. And um, that's basically how to do that. I am going to show you how to use the iNaturalist app to add observations, which is an alternative to using the website. And it's a nice one to use if you are taking your photos on your phone. So I'll just go through some screenshots here to show you how that's done. So you open up iNaturalist and you add observation. If you're adding ones from images that you already took, you go um, choose image. A nice thing about using the app is that the time and the location are auto-filled from the information that is in that photo file. The next thing you need to do is to click on add to project and then select the backyard bumblebee count project. And you can then um, fill in the date, count, and flower from the data sheet as well. When you scroll down, you'll see the, the place to fill in the total survey time in minutes 
as well as the sex. And there's a menu there to pick the land cover from your data sheet. I wanted to just show you the data sheet real quickly. So um, you can, can download these from the, the website for the Bumblebee, Backyard Bumblebee Count. And the top part is where you fill in all that information. That's the information about the observation, where it's taking place, how long you did it. There is a little section in the middle with just kind of a cheat sheet reminder of names of the bumblebees and some um, simple ID features that aren't the only things you need to look at, but um, may be reminders from, um, from learning about bumblebee ID. And then the bottom section is where you're putting the data. So here is where you'll just notice that there um, are lines for each combination of species, sex, and flower. So, um, so just make sure you're keeping track of all of that. I do recommend using the data sheet, whether you're using the, the app, for this afterwards or not, um, it's, you're gonna be able to concentrate more on what you're seeing if you're not uploading each observation while you're going along. So you can, can use your phone to take pictures and then use the app afterwards to upload your photos and your observations and your data sheet can be used to keep track of what you saw where. Backing up to this whole process, for participating. First, you are learning some bumblebee species ID and some bumblebee photography skills. Then you're signing up for an iNaturalist account, joining the Backyard Bumblebee Count project, collecting data, and entering those data at iNaturalist. I'm going to guess at a few questions people might have. You may be wondering where to do this. So you really can do it wherever you find flowers with bees and you have permission to be there. So um, you can do this in backyards, in parks, pastures, roadsides, all kinds of different environments, prairies, woods, wetlands. We do really want to get this information from all kinds of different places. So um, the more different places you can, different kinds of environments this can be done in, the better. However, we are asking as in cooperation with the, the Minnesota Bumblebee Survey, we're asking you to kind of pick one site that you repeatedly visit. So that gets to when and how often to collect data. So you can start in, in late June, early July, and you can go through late August. We're asking you to do one of these observations um, once a week per location. So we do ask that you repeatedly visit a location because that will, will help us really understand what's going on at that place. So when you're picking out a site, I suggest that you do Think about what's happening there in the future. Make sure that there are going to be flowers um, that will, would likely be flowers around there every week, you know, through the rest of the summer. For most of these collections, it's great if you can do 15 minutes or longer. It's a ver pretty variable in terms of how much time you spend, but do record the time. That is the most important thing. So there's some people that may not be able to commit to surveying every week, or maybe you have a, a cool place that you're visiting and you wanna be able to do a survey there. That's totally an option too. Particularly, we're encouraging people to do those um, kind of less regular surveys during the official time of the Backyard Bumblebee Count, which is from July 24th to August 2nd of this year, 2020. We picked that time because that is typically the time when there are a lot of bumblebees out, particularly rusty patch bumblebees um, have their, their colonies are peaking then and it's a great time to get out and have the best chance of finding them. If you just can't get a hold on bumblebee ID skills, don't feel bad, it is hard work. Just take photos of every bee that you see and take multiple photos of each bee so that we have the best chance of being able to get species level identifications on those bees. If you have more questions, I encourage you to email me and ask me. 
um, if there's questions about the protocols, how you, how you do this, if you have questions about the backyard bumblebee count in general, here is the website that has um, a lot of the, the information that you may be looking for, so your questions may be answered there. And though I won't be seeing many of you in, in person this year that I normally would out with our bumblebee surveys, I look forward to seeing your data and seeing you all in the future. Have fun out there. Thank you.